At Global Electronic Services, we do a full repair on AC and DC motors, all in-house. From bearing changes to brush replacements, frame repair, machining end bells and shafts and milling keyways to full rewinds, dynamic balancing services, and full load dynamometer tests. Since we do all our own repairs right here in this facility, we can control our quality and get you much faster turnarounds. In this video, you will see the full process of an electric motor repaired from start to finish, including magger and surge tests, disassembly, KE test, cut and burn off, coil stripping, data recording, media blasting, washer, laminations and insulations, coil making, winding and lacing, final insulation, dipping process, bake, resurge test, balance rotor, reassembly, dyno test and paint, all done in our full service motor shop. We also house a full machine shop to service all your needs. We begin every motor repair with a mega and surge test. These are dielectric tests that will test the windings. First, the motor is tested using a megometer. This test will confirm the insulation strength of the motor windings, as well as if the motor is shorted to ground in any way. However, you cannot completely test windings with a mega test alone. This is why we perform a surge comparison test. This will allow us to monitor the waveform patterns of the phase-to-phase -phase insulation quality within the motor's windings while under an electrical load. Phase 1 Phase 2 Phase 3 this motor has a bad signal on all three phases. Once we have done both sets of dielectric tests and found a failure in the windings, we will then disassemble and inspect the motor for other failures such as bearings, stator, shaft, rotor, or other mechanical failure. We employ root cause methodology to perform a thorough failure analysis and determine what repairs need to be made. Once disassembled, the stator is brought to a special coil cutoff saw and a cut is made to remove one end of the stator windings. This is so that after burn-off, the winding can be easily removed from the coils after taking and recording the data. The burn-off oven is a high temperature oven designed to actually burn off varnish and insulation and makes it easier to remove the old windings without damaging the lamination slots. The cut stator is then moved to the burnout oven and burned at a high temperature for several hours depending on the size of the motor. The stator is cooled slowly after burnoff and kept in the oven to preserve the shape and integrity. Now our stator is ready. One of our winding technicians is ready to record data, including number of slots, how many coil turns, pitch, and size of the wire needed to make coils and rewind the motor, whether it is lap wound or concentric, and if it has any special configurations or design. The data is recorded and entered into our database. Next, the technician carefully removes the faulty windings. As the coils have been removed, we must now remove the leftover varnish, insulation, and any contaminants. We do this in our media blaster. Different than a sand blaster, it uses a soft walnut shell to prevent any damage to the laminations but still removes any debris, as that could lead to a loss of energy efficiency in the motor. Once the blasting process is finished, the stator and all the pieces of the disassembled motor are then brought to a specialized machine that will steam clean and wash the parts, removing any debris or other contaminants.
When the stator core has been thoroughly cleaned and inspected, it is now ready to have insulation added to the lamination slots. First, we use an insulation paint to paint inside the stator. Next, liner insulation is carefully measured and installed within the stator slots to keep the coils from making contact with the stator core. Using the data taken earlier, the winder will form coils using the appropriate winding head. The winder technician will use concentric, single phase, three phase, or continuity heads, depending on what type of motor is being wound. During the coil making process, the winder will feel the wire for any nicks, scratches, or other manufacturing imperfections and replace if necessary. For this motor, the technician will need 48 coils in 12 groups of four. The coils are then added to the stator slots and grouped according to the motor's configuration. After the coils are in place, wedging is added to prevent rotor to winding contact and to further insulate the coil. After the coils have been inserted, our winder technician adds lacing to add strength and stability to the newly formed windings. As a final step, new motor leads are connected. All work is thoroughly inspected for quality. Before the stator can be cleared to proceed to the next process, it undergoes another series of dielectric tests to confirm the quality and electrical integrity of the newly formed windings. Now that we know the windings are good, they are now heated to 90 to 120 degrees to remove any internal moisture and improve varnish bonding to the coils. The motor is heated for a brief time in the bake oven to prepare it for dipping. After this, the stator is dipped in a special varnish treatment. The varnish bonds the windings together and prevents the coil movement within the stator core that could result in motor failure. This process also protects the windings from contamination. Once the varnish has fully penetrated the windings, the stator is then sent back to the bake oven to be cured. The rotor is the moving component of an electromagnetic system in the electric motor. Its rotation is due to the interaction between the windings and the magnetic fields, which produces a torque about the rotor's axis. Often, an imbalance occurs because of magnetic stresses like vibration, electrical noise, and circulating currents. Overheating or misapplications like improper operation or mounting can also cause an imbalance. Here, we will balance and calibrate the motor to NEMA specs by adding a known weight at a known angle. The technician will take measurements of the rotor and record the shaft length, drive diameter, journal span, 
and correction radius of the center shaft. He will level and position the rotor, align the encoder, start the motor and bring to operational speed and add permanent weight. A balancing report based on 1.5 mil as a standard is generated and the rotor is ready to go to reassembly. The stator rewind is complete and we will reassemble the motor. The newly balanced rotor is installed first and the bearings are changed. Because the bearings take the motor's mechanical, environmental and load stresses, we replace them with OEM certified high quality bearings on every motor repair. Once the repair of the motor is complete, it is ready to be fully load tested on one of our dynamometers. The dyno works by using a water brake inside to counter the motor's shaft. The energy is dissipated as heat into the water. We control torque rise until the motor performs at its rated horsepower. The technician will bolt down the motor to the dyno, use a coupling to attach the motor, Shackle the yoke to the coupling. Use dial calipers to ensure the motor and the dyno are within balance of each other. As the dynamic load increases, we will monitor the amperage to ensure the motor is not drawing excessive current. The dyno will take samples a few times per second to give us a clear reading that the motor is performing to OEM specs. You can see on the screen as the motor approaches its full performance load. Now that the motor has passed its full load test on the dyno, one of our technicians will give the motor a new fresh coat of paint. One last quality check is performed and the motor is prepped for shipping. Global Electronic Services believes in the best quality at the best price in the quickest turnaround. Being able to service all your electric motor needs in-house gives us the ability to offer you the very best repair of an electric motor repaired from start to finish. From bearing changes, brush replacements, frame repair, machining end bells and shafts and milling keyways to full rewinds, dynamic balancing services, and full load dynamometer tests. Please let us know if you have any questions. We are here 24-7 to help.